on today's show. The Hawks make it 13 wins in a row, but just how many all-star spots do they deserve? In Crossfire, we debate which player needs to be, has to be invited to next month's slam dunk contest. And in the up-down report, could Kobe Bryant be the next Charles Barkley? It's Tuesday, January 20th. The starter starts now. Sweet world, and welcome to the starters. Whether you're joining us live online, listening to the podcast, or catching us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets. Alongside me, as always, it's Tass Mellis. Thanks for joining us. To my right, starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. Hey, oh, hey, oh. And finally, the international man of mystery, it's Lee Ellis. Friends. Mm. Lily. Lily, all right, fun show for you this evening. We've got Crossfire, the Up Down Report, but first, a little fill in the blank again. We had some fun with this last week. We're going to do it again. The Hawks, a great long weekend for them. The winning streak now 13 straight games. But the question is, Tess, fill in the blank. Blank Hawks should make the All-Star game this year. Four Hawks Four, deserve all of them. to be in the All-Star game. Four Hawks deserve to be there. That doesn't mean that they're going to get there. But let's give you the reasons as to why they should be there. I think Jeff Teague finally gets to his first All-Star game. Likely the most important player on this team. Paul Millsap. You know, when he's already made a team, you've got that going for you. Coaches like to pick sure. guys who have been there before. His numbers are fantastic. Al Horford also has that going for him. He's been there before. But I think that's where the cutoff is. It's two or three, in my opinion. That's who's actually going to make it, especially yeah. when the, they get announced on Thursday. The starters do on TNT with none of the Hawks going to be voted right. on. You have to get four guys selected amongst the on seven. The bench? That's yeah. not going to happen. But, hard. but but Kyle Korver is the really interesting guy. He deserves to be there. He is performing out of his head, but he also plays at a spot in the guards position yeah. that's extremely strong in the Eastern Conference. And you're talking about getting four guys there. You're going to leave off one of a Kyrie Irving or Chris Bosh. And that just ain't going to happen. Not likely. But you said uh, Jeff Teague is the most important Hawk. I would argue that Corver is the most important Hawk. And that's why, to me, he is going to the All-Star game for sure. Just because when he's out on the court, the Hawks are amazing on offense. When he sits, their offense kind of dies. Just because the way he shoots the ball, everybody has to pay attention to him. And that's how Jeff Teague has so many lanes. Paul Millsap has so many lanes. It's all Corver. No, you're, you're right. The offense is clicking. This team is great. I mean, if you're not watching the Hawks, wise up. Start watching them. They're the most entertaining team in, uh, in the league, arguably, right now. The way they move the ball around and, and they can also do it defensively. I love this Hawks story, but I think we're going overboard with four of them. Any chance of four of them making it? No, I but think this it's is more about do they deserve it? Yeah, but I, like I like to compare them to the Spurs because we've been doing that all year, and it's fine to do that. The Spurs have never, ever had all three of their big guys, Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili, mm -hmm. all make the same All-Star game. The good thing never. is they play in the and East. And those guys yeah. are, <laughs> yeah, they're, you're right. It's in the West. It's a little different situation, the Spurs. But that says something to me. With those three guys never went to the same game. I mean, I'm sorry, you're it's, not going to get all four Hawks there because it's only happened something like six yeah. times in NBA history anyway. It, it's going to be tough, of course, but I think with Korver, the thing that he does is uh, that's in his favour is coaches will recognise the difference he makes to the team when mm -hmm. he's on the floor, not necessarily by shooting the ball. And that's what's going to work in his favour because the coaches make this pick for the bench. And Millsap's been good, Horford's been good, and Teague, Teague is definitely going. I think Millsap or Horford, one of those two guys miss out. I think Korver's going to be there. Uh, as is the case with all of these, let's hear what you guys think uh, on Twitter. Hashtag the starters, fill in the blank along with us. All right, next one. The Chicago Bulls have not played well over the last two weeks. Derrick Rose, quite frankly, he's tired of it. Mm -hmm. Following uh, Monday's loss to the Cavaliers, Chicago's sixth loss in their last eight games, Rose was not shy about expressing how he felt about his team and his frustration. Quote, everybody has to be on the same page. Until then, we're going to continue to get our bleep kicked. We're not communicating while we're on the floor to one another. We've got to give a better effort. It seems like we're not even competing. It's bleeping. <laughs> Irritating. Fill in the blank, Tess. Derrick Rose's post-game comments were what? They're powerful. I mean, when the quiet guy speaks, people will listen. And when the quiet man curses, <laughs> even more people will listen. Yeah. I mean, this was something that you'd probably hear from Joakim Noah. Sure. And I think Rose is sort of taking his place as Joakim Noah is sitting on the bench. And someone needs to get their butt in gear. And, and it's Derrick Rose in this instance. They're one and four in their last five. They just don't have it together. They don't have that passion. And, and I think that's what that's where you see Joakim's value. Yeah, exactly. He's not playing right. and they're not motivated. They're just not yeah. into the game. This Bulls team so far is 20th in first half scoring margin, 5th in second half scoring margin. So it shows you they're coming out and they're just not trying very hard Lee at the beginning nice. of games. I took my two-month-old to a Bulls game. She slept through the first half because <laughs> it was so quiet there. And, I mean, it's just 
weird to see from the Bulls, like you're saying, without Joakim Noah there, they just seem dead to start games. And it just plays out very weird because everybody kind of gets down and there's just no energy there. And next thing you know, they're down by 10 at half. And that's the strange thing is that this is a Bulls team for the last four or five years. It's like you were always going to yeah. get the effort on the defensive end, mm -hmm. especially. And, and Tibbs has talked about it. It's just not there. Yeah. They're just not executing. And a huge part, like don't get me wrong, is Noah, of course, being out of the yeah. lineup. And you could even talk about Mike Dunleavy's impact as well being he, in and out. He is their sort of Kyle Corver, not in the same quite the same way, but he does space the floor, and that's what they need yeah. as well offensively. But defensively, last night especially against the Cleveland Cavaliers, they just didn't even look engaged. Mm -hmm. And that's something you could never say about a Tom Thibodeau team through right. his first four years as a coach. And they need to get that identity back because t most pundits still have the Bulls as the best team in the Eastern Conference, but they're not showing that right now. And you're right, Skeets. They definitely are missing Mike Dunleavy because he's their kind of their only true small forward. And like you're saying, Lee, he's their corver because yeah. he spaces the floor. That's part of the reason Jimmy Butler's numbers have fell off in January. Just there's not enough room out there. It's not going to get any easier for the Bulls here. I mean, you look at their next four games. We're talking Spurs, Mavericks, Heat. Okay, you know, that's not a given, though. And then the Warriors, you know, like the lights out Golden State Warriors. So, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, there's a lot of people now wondering, is Tibbs even losing? this locker room is he playing these guys too many minutes I think people are overreacting a little bit yeah. uh, they have had some tough you know competition but it'll be interesting to watch going forward because you're rightly a lot of people see, sort of assume still if they're all mm. healthy this is one of the best teams in the east and they should be in the conference finals no is a big reason yeah you can't quantify what Jojo does in terms <laughs> yeah. of numbers you just can't I yeah. mean the effort obviously it's a big big factor Pau Gasol sort of looks like last year's Pau Gasol with the Lakers where yeah he can perform obviously he's got all the skill set in the world but when you don't have a motivator, yeah. you don't have those guys around you, your team's just not as good. He needs Noah there. But Noah, even when he has played this season, hasn't been Enough. anywhere near where he was last season. So he needs to get healthy. That's the most important thing for him. All right, final one. Fill in the blank, guys. The odds of the Phoenix Suns making the playoffs are what? Those odds are slim. They're Tayshaun, Tayshaun Prince slim. <laughs> I mean, that's... Jay that's, Skeet that's, slim. And it, it's less <laughs> about the Phoenix Suns and who they are. It's more about the ninth place team that's trailing them. The Suns have got it together. They're playing extremely well, but but I think when you're talking about the OKC Thunder and a three and a half game lead at this point of the season, halfway through, just isn't enough. And the Suns just took a little too long to get it together. Uh, OKC is looking fantastic right now. Beat the best team in the league, the Warriors, on Friday. And then they led the Magic by as much as 38 on Sunday. Compare that to what the Suns are going to have to go through wow. this, this upcoming schedule. Uh, I think you're going to see that three and a half game That's lead rough. shrink, yeah. disappear, go bye bye. Suns have done a good job of keeping yep. that lead, yeah. but you have to point out, you know, 30 of their first 43 games coming against teams not in that Western Conference playoff race. Yep. They, they've taken advantage of it, and I think they've done some things solid over the last little while, even getting the three guards to work a little bit better. And I know Markeith has been great and Alex Len, but it's, you know, when you got the Thunder chasing it yeah. there, that is yeah. tough. I yeah. think Slim is sort of the right fill in the blank. The Thunder there. is an interesting thing because they've been great with Westbrook and Durant both on the court. They've won like 71% of their games, but just they have no margin of error That's now for it. either of them to miss any yeah. time. That's how the Suns are going to get in, is if something else happens to I, the Thunder. I thought the, the bright side of the Sun, uh, the great Suns block, had an interesting point though. The Suns' playoff position will likely determine the Suns' decisions at the trade deadline. So if those eight games that we showed you, you know, they put up a stinker and lose a lot of those, again, very tough games, and they go something like 1-7, 2-6, and six, you wonder if that help will have any impact of possibly making more moves at yeah. the, around the deadline, sure. not standing pat if they do well. I think it's an interesting point. Yeah, it's tough because you mentioned the Oklahoma City Thunder. If they do have any sort of slip up, then it certainly helps the Suns. That three and a half game lead, it doesn't sound like much, but it's still, they've got to still win four more games than Phoenix do going to through to the rest of the season. That's, a, that's still a big margin out in the West. Sure. Let's hear what people think. Again, with all of those fill in the blanks, jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters. We got lots more to come on tonight's show. Coming up, we're gonna uh, we're gonna see who we think or debate who we think should get the invite to the Sprite Slam Dunk Contest. We'll debate that and a whole lot more in Crossfire. So come on back. Welcome to Crossfire. This is how it works. Trey will give Skeets and I three topics. We'll debate each one, and at the end of it all, Trey will declare a winner. Trey, what is our first topic? First question, over at SB Nation, our friend Paul Flannery talked about some teams poised to make a Bucks-like turnaround next season. So tell me, who's the next Milwaukee? It's the Sixers. They're going to do it. Already? The Sixers draft injured guys. They stash players. They could have five guys appear on their team next year, and you wouldn't think anything of it. This is what we do know. Nerlens Noel is entering his second year. 
always tough for a big man to enter the league. Then you've got draft picks, draft picks, draft picks. They've got top two top three picks coming next season, their own, and Joel Embiid, who you could argue is a number one pick if he wasn't injured, plus a pick in the teens. They can do it next year. Wow, already. That's tough. I was tempted to go with the Utah Jazz, but I have to avoid the Western Conference, which is why I'll stick in the East. I'll say the Orlando Magic. Lots to like about the Magic. You got Nick Vucevic, really worthy of an all-star consideration this year. The future backcourt of Oladipo, Oladipo, excuse me, and Peyton. I mean, impact players, especially defensively, other young talent in Twice Harris. You wonder though, like the Bucks, that it might take a coaching change. Jacques Vaughn maybe out, someone new in. I could see this team absolutely competing like the Milwaukee Bucks this season around a 500 squad. The Bucks are too good to be the Magic. The Bucks won 15 games all last year. The Magic have already won 15 games now. Oh my God. The Sixers are not going to be in the playoffs next year. You think the team that's They're too not. good. I'm telling you. All right, next one. Two. Second question. All-Star weekend is less than a month away. We don't know the format quite yet, but who is your must-invite dunker for this year's dunk contest? This is so easy. We have to have to invite Wolves rookie Zach Levine. He's good. Yeah, he's a pretty good dunker. If you hadn't seen it, check out what he did at the Pro-Am dunk contest in Seattle this summer. Uh, it's an obvious pick. He's got everything. He's got the crazy hops. It's sort of, he's got that smooth motion, but he adds a little power at the end too. He's got all three things you want in a dunk contest participant. And he just did a free throw, or excuse me, a windmill from the free throw line. Uh, not bad. He I, has to be in it. I love Zach Levine. He makes it look so easy. So the judges are going to have to be on the ball when they're judging that guy. But I'm a little more pumped to see DeAndre Jordan. You don't often get to see a monster in the slam dunk contest who can throw it down. We haven't had a guy over 6'9 participate in four years. We get Zach Levine size guys all the time. There hasn't been one since JaVale McGee in 2011, especially you got a seven-year vet. I like that. You got a guy who's not just young, who's not just a guy coming out of the league or coming into the league, I should say. You got a guy who really wants to be there. You'll have Blake Griffin throwing him oops. Well, Blake that's Griffin the problem. Will out of a key. That's the problem with DeAndre. You need people to throw him oops, and so many things can go wrong with someone whoever's throwing it that you can just sit there forever. You've waiting. got 20 chances. I don't like that. Uh, he needs the oops. Well, final one. Three. Final question. We've talked a lot about Jimmy Butler and Clay Thompson, but which under the radar player has made the biggest leap in the first half of this season? I think it's Markeith Morris of the Phoenix Suns. Whenever people talk about the Phoenix Suns, all they talk about is their backcourt. How about this guy? He's doing something that's sort of rare. He got votes for most improved player last season, and he'll be up for the award again. One year, you get a player's numbers that jump. That makes sense. But to do it in back-to-back -back years is impressive, especially when he goes into a starting role, playing against better players, and his efficiency stays up. The Suns were smart to lock this guy up. They're only paying him eight per. This guy has been great. I had a lot of horrible preseason predictions. I said the Knicks would make the playoffs, for crying out loud. But one I got right was Draymond Green. That's supposed to be his under the count. radar. Taz, don't tell me he's not under the radar. He isn't now because he's exploded. Yeah, that's the question. He went last in everyone's fantasy draft this year, and I told you to draft him, and he's killing it. And forget his offensive numbers. He's arguably, you know, and the defensive stats reveal this, one of the most important players in the league on that end. I'm intrigued to find out whether someone throws a max offer at this guy and then what the Warriors would do. Despite, again, not the craziest of offensive numbers, he's that important. That important to he the is. Warriors' success. He's up for Defensive Player of the Year. He's up for an All-Star spot. Again, he's not under the radar. Oh my! Markeith sure. Morris, the guy that was already getting votes for Most Improved, very under the radar. Come on, man. All right, who won, Trey? Your winner today is J.E. Skeets. Yes. Those uh, Zach Levine highlights are twos. Oh, Sexy. I know. Right? Lordy, lordy. <laughs> Holy, he has to be invited. Whew. He has to. He's unbelievable. All right, got to take a break. When we return, thumbs up or thumbs down on Russell Westbrook's We Executed Scrum. That and more. You're watching the starters. Back with the starters, right into the up-down report, where the four of us figure out where we sort of stand on a few hot button topics. And we love to hear from you guys. Jump on Twitter, let us know as well. Hashtag the starters. Our first one, the Thunder got a crazy good win against the Warriors on Friday night, and Russell Westbrook was a monster. He put up an unbelievable triple-double line, though you wouldn't have guessed it with the way he spoke to the media after the game. He was very, very salty. Take a listen. Which you and Serge seem to be in a really great rhythm. Uh, what allowed you guys to be so successful? Mm, did a good job of execution. Rush, you had eight assists in the fourth quarter. What did you see from them defensively that allowed you to focus as much as you did on passing the rock? Oh, we did a good job executing. Now, are you upset with something? Mm -hmm. I just don't like you. 
You don't? No. Do you not like Nick either? I love Nick. Oh. But I don't like you. Well, you gave us about the same answers. Yeah. You got another question? You played a great game. One of your better ones. Is this one of, in terms of production? Assists, rebounds, points. Is this one of the better games you can think of in your in your career? Good execution. There it is. We executed. That's great stuff. We executed. All right. So <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down on on Westbrook's we executed media scrum. Three of us. Lee, Tass, myself, thumbs up. Trey, thumbs down. Three reasons I don't like this. Okay. One, he's ripping off Marshawn Lynch. That is his thing, answering questions with the same response. Two, he's taking his frustrations out with one reporter on everybody else, which I don't think is cool. Okay. And three, he's wearing a ski mask and not wearing the eye holes. <laughs> What's the point of wearing a ski mask at that point? He wore it into the game. <laughs> and it's just a different look, man. You like different looks. I do like different looks. Okay, don't get caught up on the ski mask. Nonetheless, I, I do think it's kind of whack that he is making a job hard for everybody because he has a beef with this one reporter. Oh, come on. Uh, these guys ba basically say nothing in their post-game interviews, and I don't blame them for that. We are jerks in the media, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> but... In this instance, he's making it fun. He's making post-game interviews fun. We're talking for about him. It. I'm cool for with us, it. not for the people who yeah. are there. Uh, they don't like usually the get anything thing from ever. these post-game interviews anyway. I, I didn't mind it, but it just sounded too premeditated. He should have mm -hmm. just taken the Greg Popovich route and just answered short, sharp, bluntly with one or two different words, rather than just that execution one, because you knew in his head he was just going to say the same thing. But he gets asked a lot of dumb questions well, as well. The three of us giving it thumbs up. We didn't ask him, though I would imagine Paul Pierce would also give it thumbs up because he had some fun on Saturday with the whole Westbrook we executed idea. Here you go. We executed, man. <laughs> we executed. Was this a case of you guys rebounding? We executed. Any more questions? I don't like you. <laughs> we executed. We executed. Oh, Pierce, pretty good actor. That was not bad. It was pretty good. Put those glasses again. Too. Yeah, he's got the crazy glasses as well. A double, uh, double win there. All right, our next one in the up down report. Kobe Bryant as a TV oh. analyst. Are you thumbs up or are you thumbs down? Tass and Lee go thumbs up. For sure. We're saying down. Why, why do you think Kobe would work? Because there was reports going around this weekend about the idea, at least, of maybe Kobe, after his career's over, could step into a Charles Barkley type role. He needs a job when his career's done. He's certainly not <laughs> yeah. going to be a coach. Oh, yeah, he really money. needs the money. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, if he doesn't have something to do to occupy his time, he's going to run into trouble. As I said, he's not going to be a coach. He can't <laughs> coach anyone. We need him on TV. He'd be blunt. He'd be honest. He would tell it how it is. I think he would be really good in this role. There's a whole bunch of back in my day when you're listening to studio shows, and I think Kobe has already reached the point where he thinks the NBA has gone soft. Can you imagine putting those two worlds together? He's just going to hate everything. He's going to hate everything. You who have says, to watch. Who says he has to be in studio shows, though? Why can't he be an analyst well, in games? I, I think he'll tell it like it is. Old man Kobe don't care. He will tell it like it is. A and some people, you know, they beat around the bush as an analyst. Who was the this last legend to sit like courtside and call games? Michael Jordan hasn't done it. Magic Johnson. Sure, exactly yeah. right. That was 20 years ago. Yeah, maybe Zeke. Yeah, well, let's hear what people think. I, I think he's far more likely to go into uh, business, Kobe Inc., than broadcasting, but... Needs know, a job. I think it would. He could does, be man. fun. You're right, you're right. All right. Uh, we had a good weekend, long weekend, I should point out, for the wedgies. They just keep coming, Tess. They don't stop. They don't stop. Especially in Sacramento. Sacramento, Sleep Train Arena. There have been so many of them. Chris Bosch providing us with, with one on Friday night. Sunday night in Orlando, Dion Waiters goes clunk. Hey, we're up 30. Might as well provide a wedgie yeah, for the starters. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Dion. Monday night, Sacramento involved in one again, this time in Portland. Jason Thompson goes glass wedge, giving us three <laughs> wedgies over four nights this past weekend. So we've got to update our wedgie board, of course. Thank you, Trey, for providing Already us going to zero. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Also want to point this out, uh, 289 Design sending in these wedgie t-shirts, Lee holding them up there for you. <laughs> Look at that. Now, no backboard included. That'd be a next to impossible your wedgie there. Your chest is the backboard. Yeah, your chest, Beautiful your material, chest is the backboard. So again, that's 289 Design. Thanks for sending those in. Let's unleash the starter's fantasy unicorn, though. It's the pickups of the week presented by the General Insurance. Lee helping out fantasy basketball players with some guys they should have their eye on. Who you got this week? Alex Len of the Phoenix Suns. If you need rebounds and blocks, he will give you those. He won't score a lot of points, but whatever he does score will be done at a high percentage. 
Langston Galloway yes. from the New York Knicks. I'm not sure what's more surprising, the Knicks won or that I'm pointing out Langston Galloway. He had 21 points in the win over the Pelicans yesterday. He had 19 a few games ago. He's going to get the Houston minutes, Rocket. yeah. Someone has to. Why not grab him? But this guy, J.R. Smith, one of the streakiest dudes in fantasy and real-life basketball, <laughs> but he could be on a hot streak right yeah. now. In seven games since joining the Cavs, he's hit three or more threes four times and scored 20 or more three times. This is about fantasy. It's not who you have, it's when you have them. He could be on a hot streak right now. He might have, you might only have him for one or two weeks, but grab him, and then when he starts going, his, start, his shots start missing, then you can trade uh, him or release him again. That's some good advice. I mean, a guy like JR can almost single-handedly get a head-to-head league when yeah. you three-pointers made, especially when he's on fire, and he is right now. All right, thank you, Lee. One more break. When we return, Friday night's pick and payoff result between Tass and I and Lee's two very solid thumbs. So come on back. Back with the starters, nothing changes in Tass's eye pick and payoff battle for the month of January. We split the games we disagreed on on Friday night uh, and otherwise had a pretty rough night. We went two and three. I'm five games up still on Tass in January. Only two games on this evening and we agree on both of them. We both like uh, the road teams, the Thunder in Miami and the Spurs in Denver. So. I can say to you, good luck to you tonight, Tass, because <laughs> we would both win. Lee, yes. before we get to the very solid play, I'm told we have a, somewhat of a special tweet. Yeah, Chandler Parsons this afternoon did a Q&A on Twitter. Yeah. And he was asked a fairly innocent question by a somewhat handsome gentleman. He was asked for his favourite show on NBA <laughs> TV, and he replied, starters. So uh, we've got a fan, guys. In Chandler Parsons. Chan Chan man. All right. <laughs> Chan Chan fan. Chandler Parsons. Thanks for watching, Chandler. All right, let's get to the very solid play of the night. Okay. Is it Chandler Parsons? Unfortunately not, but oh. I might have to make a special one for him this week. Anyway, uh, this one comes from the Houston Rockets versus the Indiana Pacers last night. Starts with James Harden. Beautiful ball movement. Patrick Beverly with a beautiful one-two there with Dwight Howard. Out to James Harden in the corner for a... Fish bomb. And that's what I call a very solid play. Excellent. You know what else is uh, very solid, Lee? What's that? A free trial of oh, NBA yes. League Pass. If you guys aren't aware of this, uh, all week long, free trial. You can jump over to NBA.com slash League Pass to figure out how to get that going through all the way to the January 25th. So uh, jump on there and enjoy that. You know, not terribly needed tonight, but wait till we get all like the yeah. 10 plus games going. And oh, yeah. it's uh, a lot of fun. So check that out. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night. Pretty excited for this uh, Thunder Heat game because as we talked about, OKC trying to catch up mm -hmm. to the Phoenix Suns, so an important game. And Miami's always one of weird, weird teams to try and figure yeah. out. Yeah, they look horrible one night and then fantastic the next. So we'll be back tomorrow to probably talk about those games and a whole lot more, so join us then. All right, thanks for joining us today, folks. And remember, baby carrots are just chopped and shaved adult carrots. <laughs> Brace the night, people. I love baby carrots. Yeah. <laughs>